Welcome back, everybody, to some more Grand Tactician the Civil War. This is my 1862 Confederate campaign. I believe we are in the closing stages of this campaign. We outnumber the Union almost 2 to 1 in fielded manpower. His national morale is down to 44. As soon as it hits below 25, the war will be over. Uh, I'm hoping still that we can get French intervention. We're at 69% on French intervention. We may not see it, though, uh, and I don't know how many more episodes this will go. It's always possible it could end in this episode. But as I mentioned last episode, the next campaign is going to be a union campaign, but it's going to be a live stream campaign. All of the episodes of that will be live streamed. Uh, so we'll try to set up a schedule for that once this one's complete. I'm also already taking requests for units uh, from our patrons that are at the captain level on up over on Patreon. If you'd like to be a part of that and have a unit in the game, click on the link in the description take you over there. Uh, you can request one for that upcoming union campaign. There is a post about that. Just reply to that if you're a patron. Let's dive in and see what happens today. Okay, July 22nd, 1863, we are going into battle outside of Frederick, Maryland. I would guess this one's going to be fought on the Antietam battlefield, but I guess we'll see. And I have no idea exactly how many troops will be on each side or the reinforcements that will arrive, but we'll take a look as soon as we get into the battle. Okay, to start, we have double the men that the Union had. We have 33,000 on hand to his 16,000. Let's see if there are any reinforcements coming. It looks like there are not for the Union. Uh, I don't know if we have any coming or not. Nope, also no. So this is it. This is what we're going to be fighting with. Good odds for me. I feel pretty good about what's going to happen here. All right, so the plan here is going to be, since I have the numbers, first of all, I put all my divisions in double line uh, so we can have a reserve for each of those units. I'm going to go ahead and start crossing. I'll keep my guns right here in the center. I'm going to go grab some of these objectives since those do help in determining the outcome of the battle. And honestly, any one of my divisions can probably hold him off while reinforcements arrive if one of them makes contact. So we'll go ahead and start moving and we'll see what happens. All right, we've spotted him. He's crossing down by Burnside Bridge. So we're getting into position, taking these objectives. I do have a force moving in right here. At this crossing... I think we'll go ahead and throw. He's throwing up some skirmishers. Let's go ahead and slow things down. Pemberton's moving into position up here, but I think I'm actually going to go ahead and tell him to move up quite a bit further. We've got Stewart's cavalry right here. Let's move them. I want to see this. about right here. So right here at the apex of this fight is going to be Whiting's Brigade, Hood's Brigade over here under Garrity, and this is the Carolean Guard. Oh, and look, we have a feud over here and somebody already deciding to take their own initiative and turn back. Lovely. That exposes Garrity's flank. Who was killed? Whiting has fallen. Oh, boy. Well, that should solve the feud issue, right? No, I guess not. Now, who, who was wounded? My goodness, Garrity was wounded. Jeez. Yeah, his flank is just hanging out in the air over here. Back this way, Garrity. Still waiting on our guns to get up. We got two guns over here firing on this division. Alright, we're gonna send the Stonewall Brigade to go deal with them. Waiting on two divisions to come down from over here. I have a feeling that so far casualties haven't been pretty for me. 
Yeah, so far he's inflicted double the casualties that I have. I'm not entirely surprised by that. But it's early, and we've got the numbers. So even if this division broke all together, I'd be okay. Looks like we are going to lose Garrity. He's an elite unit now, though. That's Hood's Brigade. There's not going to be elite today. He's got Iron Discipline 3, he's still broken. I mean, you can only take so much fire on your flank, lose your commanding officer, and still do well on the field. All right, Stonewall Brigade's gonna charge these guns and take them out of commission. Problem solved. So now we're gonna move Johnson's division up going to go surprise Joe Hooker on his flank. See, the problem is we caught him. The problem for him, we caught him in the middle of crossing that bridge. And now he's kind of bunched up there because he doesn't know what to do. Oh, the Carolean Guard is also now an elite unit. They've also got Iron Discipline 3. Give this flag here. I, feel like we got I didn't hit the check mark. There we go. Welcome to the Elite Ranks. Are my guns firing? Yes, they are. Still waiting on Pemberton's division to get into position as well as our cavalry. Cavalry's just about there. Numbers are probably starting to even out a little bit, although it's still pretty much just these two brigades that are engaged. So maybe not. Here comes the Stonewall Brigade. We'll move up some uh, time a little bit while we get some of these guys in position. Got to give a lot of credit to uh, to Whiting's brigade, despite their losses. They're losing their commander, their tough position. There's still only a deadly volley one. That one doesn't seem to be leveling up like the others. Let's look at the numbers. Alright, now we've inflicted almost double the casualties on him. So that settled in after a, a rough start. Our Corellian guards only lost 50 men. Although I guess they really think of it at the moment. Let's move them up. It's kind of a tough spot they're in, kind of straddling this creek. Now we gotta get the other cavalry units in position. Oh, what's going on over here? Let's get Ashby's brigade moved up. He's waiting on the rest of his division.
the first. Shown as a minor victory right now. Let's take a look and see why that is. 18 objective points. Our morale is now higher than his. Our morale started in like the 50s. His was in the 70s. Uh, he's taking some hits because of routes, and of course he's taking a hit from losses. So we're just now getting Pemberton's division in a position. Let's go ahead and give him fresh orders on where to line up. Bring Scott over here. Looks like Barry's brigade just shattered. And now we finally got this division just about into position. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I think we'll probably go ahead and finish this battle off here on the first day. We caught him in a crazy hard position. He was in the middle of crossing Burnside Bridge when I came up to him so he didn't get a chance to get across and get into the position he wanted. Alright, let's send, send Ashby to deal with this battery, 3rd Division Artillery. Alright, that did the trick. Most of the Union units have broken, or now there they go, they're withdrawing. He realizes now, he, he should have withdrawn sooner, but he realizes now he's in an untenable position. This is going to be a major victory. I'm not sure what this will do to his morale, but it should clear things out in the area around Frederick and Washington a little bit. His withdrawal is complete. Let's see the numbers. It's a major victory for our forces. 1,284 lost. 4,000 on the Union side is our estimate. We don't really know for sure. These are always just estimates. Uh, but that was only the Third Corps, so it's not like we took on the entire Army of the Potomac. Uh, however, that's still some good news. Okay, with the defeat of the Third Corps, I'm hoping that he will withdraw, and that's going to largely leave Washington to me. We've got the Army of the Potomac headquarters here, but I don't think he's actually got any men with it. I'm actually going to pull Magruder back to D.C. And I think I'll pull Longstreet down there as well. Uh, I just want to kind of consolidate my forces around Washington and make sure that we hold it against anything the Union throws at me. All right, we're back to another battle at Frederick. This time it's with the Union 4th Corps, and I currently have a fewer men but I'm guessing we've got to have reinforcements on the way. Perhaps, maybe. I think it's under condition reports where we find that. Yeah, eight hours till the third core arrives, and that will give me significantly more manpower than I have right now. So we're gonna sit tight. We'll probably grab a few objectives. We're actually coming in from the south this time. The Union's coming in from the north. So we've got until about two in the afternoon when my other corps will arrive. So we're going to sit tight right here in this defensive position just outside of the town of Sharpsburg. I might go ahead and advance a brigade just to go ahead and secure this objective and then pull them back when the time comes. We've got to hang on for about, about five more hours. Okay, we're engaging right outside of town. Oh man, no, 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 no. Why are my guns... Oh, I should have told them not to take the road. Don't take the road, boys. Of course, they probably won't receive that order in time. Now I've got this gun, this battery right there. I do not want them there. Don't use the roads. Now I got two batteries parked right there in that spot. Get them out of there. Slow things down. 
Always got to remember that. To, to give that don't use roads order. If it's going to endanger my troops to do otherwise. Good Stafford's whole division pulled back. Meanwhile, over here, let's see how we're doing. Mercer's Brigade, so far so good. Kershaw's right here. Give Griffith an order to fire long range. This is the first core. We don't have any patron units in the first core because early in the war they were down on the peninsula. They weren't really expected to be too heavily engaged in the action. Well, it looks like we drove Cochran off pretty, pretty well. Let's go up and look at the numbers. Oh yeah, we've inflicted almost 500 casualties compared to 150 for the Union, and 65 of his casualties he's inflicted have come from his guns. Man, I gotta get these batteries out of here. Three and a half hours until our reinforcements arrive. We just gotta hang on till then. As long as he doesn't press this attack, I think we'll be okay. Would love to get these guns to obey my orders. So they're not taking a tremendous amount of casualties. Well, these guys have. They've lost 43. There we go. Griffith and Ector are behind a stone wall, so they've got a good spot. Two and a half hours till reinforcements arrive. Now one of Griffith's guns got stuck up there. Oh, that's a gun that Griffith grabbed. Okay. All right, now we've inflicted three to one casualties. Simon Boulevard Buckner has been killed in action. So a couple of things I want to say about this. First of all, Simon Buckner was a good friend of Ulysses S. Grant before the war. Um, they were on very friendly terms both before and after the war. Buckner later became the governor of Kentucky. Uh, in fact, oh, Hancock withdrew. In fact, Simon Buckner was governor of Kentucky during the whole um, Hatfield and McCoy feud, which almost erupted into a war between West Virginia and Kentucky when Buckner was the governor. Uh, interesting thing about Buckner Sr. dying in our timeline, um, he had a son, Simon Boulevard Buckner Jr., who was, I believe, the highest ranking Union, or highest ranking American killed in World War II. Uh, he was, I think he was a Lieutenant General, and he was killed um, well, I guess he wouldn't have been the highest ranking because I think Patton outranked him. But um, he was killed in the, the last days of the, the Battle of Okinawa. Uh, and, of course, in this timeline, if Simon Buckner Sr. dies in the Civil War, his son's never born. All right, we are at less than an hour till our reinforcements arrive. I'm not sure we're going to need them, though. Okay, so Simon Buckner was the um, 
the highest ranking military officer killed during the battle. I was thinking of Patton, but Patton wasn't killed during the war. Uh, and, and Buckner was actually posthumously promoted to four-star general. So he was the highest ranking officer killed on the battlefield during World War II. I think he was killed by Japanese artillery at Okinawa. Of course, like, like Buckner, uh, Patton also had uh, famous relatives in both the Civil War and the Revolutionary War. Patton was a direct descendant of uh, Continental General Hugh Mercer, which is kind of interesting when you see uh, this Hugh Mercer here. Hugh Mercer was killed um, I think the Battle of Princeton. He was a good friend of George Washington, uh, and he was, I think, bayoneted by the British at the Battle of Princeton just a week after the, the victory of Trenton, which he took part in. Um, and then, of course, Patton had a grandfather killed in the Civil War, as well as an uncle who was killed uh, leading his regiment in Pickett's Charge. I want to say Patton's grandfather was killed at Oak Plum Creek in 1864, but I could be wrong about that. Longstreet has arrived. He's over here. Oh, perfect. There's Jeb Stewart's division. Let's bring him up. Actually, we probably could have done that in double line. Pemberton's division. These guys are all the ones that just fought in the last battle. There's the Stonewall Brigade. They're part of Johnson's division. I'm going to bring Johnson's division up around this side here. Taking a lot of losses, but they're holding up well. Yeah, we lost 1,400 men, inflicted 2,400 casualties. But this is going to drive the only other Union Corps out of Central Maryland. All right, let's bring Stewart's cavalry up here. Oh, Hugh Mercer just broke. That's okay. We knew we were up against a lot here. Kershaw's brigade's holding up well. Griffith as well. Ector really well. Looks like he's trying to extend his line out be a little while before we get Longstreet's men into position. Somebody else was wounded. Kelly, commander of Early's artillery. We're getting into evening now. guns are facing that way. Let's try this. There we go. Alright, here we go. Stonewall Brigade's in the lead, although I think he's probably going to start withdrawing now that he sees me coming. Division is this. We got to give them some orders. Gustavus Smith. 
cover him up right here for now. These guys are holding well. We'll be able to uh, redeploy everybody come nightfall if he's still on the battlefield by then. Okay, look at this. He's uh, he's getting smart. He's finally extended his flank around around my right. Just in time, though, for my boys to arrive. I'm gonna bring Armistead right up on this stone wall. Let's get Johnson's division to advance into the town. bring up this cavalry over here. Probably going to run out of daylight before we are able to press this attack. These guys are idle because they're not in range. Come out from behind the fence. All right, boys, let's get in position. I'm waiting for Johnson to receive his order so he'll advance his division. It's Seven o'clock now, though. Oh, Griffith. There you go. Oh, he went back behind the fence again. He's finally overwhelming my brigades over here. Armistead, change that to long range, dude. Okay, we got Stewart's brigade under Fitzhugh Lee. Yeah, let's charge into Klein. drawing now. Alright, Fitz, Fitz Lee broke, but so did he. So it had the desired effect. He broke that Union attack on my right. Alright, I think we got this. Let's go ahead and speed up. This will drive the 4th Corps out of Maryland. Third Corps has already been defeated, so they're on their way out of Maryland. That should free things up for me to bolster the defenses around Washington and make sure he doesn't take them back. Let's look at the numbers. Yep, 4,400 casualties we've inflicted to 2,500 or so for the Union. He's done. There it is. All right, here we go again. Another battle for Frederick. This is our third one, and it seems like it's the the first and uh, the it's Magruder's Corps and it's Longstreet's Corps that keep fighting this. But the nice thing is, because we've been defeating these units in detail, we haven't had to face them all at once. And now we're facing the Union Fifth Corps with another three uh, thirteen thousand men. Uh, let's take a look again and see what reinforcement situation looks like. Seventeen hours till the Third Corps arrives. So our first corps that's already pretty beat up is going to have to do this again um, I feel kind of inclined to sit tight with them and wait for Longstreet's reinforcements to arrive so we'll see what happens all right I hadn't thought to check to see whether or not the Union had reinforcements arriving they do the first Corps has begun to arrive 
He's also got the Department of Virginia on the way. I don't know how many troops they'll have with them, but let's take a look and see. We're now facing 20,000 Union soldiers against our 11,000. We've got about 10 to 12 hours left until our first corps arrives. Hopefully we don't have any contact until then. All right, looks like we're not going to be able to wait for our reinforcements to arrive. He's arriving right now. We're going to have to pull back here. We're going to be out number two to one. This might not end up going the way I'd like it to. I've got one brigade sitting on the corner of this fence here. Got to pull these guns back. Got to pull Kershaw back to behind the fence. Pull Griffith back to about right here. Hugh Mercer, who's down to just 1,100 men, we'll pull him into reserve. Harmon's a brand new unit, I think, that I just recruited of uh, draftees. I'm going to go ahead and pull Squire over here to the fence. Alright, let's see what happens. report. Alright, we're inflicting more casualties so far. But he outnumbers me two to one. Okay, now I'm getting squires over there, but now I'm thinking I'm going to have to shift him this way. Although if these guys go around over here and they all hit me from one spot, uh, one side, that'll actually be better. Okay, six hours to go on our reinforcements. They'll be arriving around one or around 7 p.m. tonight. So there probably won't be a chance for them to fight on the first day. But he's sitting tight with his skirmishers, not advancing. He's just firing his guns at me. We're just kind of having our artillery duel right now, which is totally fine by me. Although I'm feeling like what I want to do here is actually target his artillery. See if maybe we can neutralize those guns. So let's go ahead and switch this order over to counter battery fire. Streets arriving on the field. Obviously, not going to be in time to fight on this day, but it is going to make a difference moving forward. So, let's go ahead and get him orders to start moving forward. We'll see how far he can get. Because the further he gets, the better position I'll be in to kind of sort them out going into day two. But we're definitely going to have him in a pincer here, which is perfect. All right, we're on a day two now, August 8th, 1863, and you can see the numbers now. I outnumber him two to one. That's fantastic news. We've got 117 guns to his 30. And so all along an 
every capacity we're going to have the advantage. I'm just waiting for Longstreet's men to get moving. He's issuing his orders. We're going to just kind of build a battle line right here along the historic Confederate battle line around Dunker Church, Sunken Road, that area. Once we've done that, then we'll start slowly advancing on the objectives and we'll see if we can't push the Union into my lines. All right, so I realized the problem was I was trying to issue orders to an entire corps, which means that Longstreet has to receive those orders from General Jackson, who's over here, and we just can't get those orders to him. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to issue orders by division, which means those will come from General Longstreet, who is with those divisions. That'll get us moving. All right, we're just about there. We're up. Uh, we're moving through Miller's Cornfield now. And we're about to get in position where we're going to be able to start engaging the enemy. It's uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Hopefully we'll have time to get this done. I want to get my guns up and able to support the attack before we start launching it. Curious to see what he's going to do here. Once he realizes that he's in between two sets of lines. There, he's starting to react now. Let's get Jeb Stewart up here with the cavalry. Actually, I think they'll send Stewart's cavalry around. No, I can't send them there because they'll go right through the Confederate line or the Union lines. Let's send them this way. Yep, he's completely changing his battle lines now. So let's slow things down. Guns have engaged. 12th Louisiana Heavy Artillery. We've got Pelham with the Stuart Horse Artillery. We've got Jackson's Artillery here. Alright, and then leading the attack from left to right, we're going to have Hood's Brigade, which is now under Woodson. Whiting's Brigade here, under Kellogg, and the Carolean Guard. I thought I selected there. Davis Smith to move forward. Johnson's division, let's see who's there. 24th Irish Volunteers, Sweet Florida First, Stonewall Brigade. We're at the point in the war now where we've got a lot of elite units. Pemberton's got Armistead, Ashby, and Doubles Buckeyes in the field. We're waiting for the cavalry to make their way around. So what I think I'll do now here is, uh, I still got units out here, I think. So let's get McClaws to go ahead and advance out. two times speed now. This will be the last battle for this episode. Three battles all fought at Frederick. Same spot, same battlefield. Just me taking out one Union Corps after another. Alright, now we're starting to spot who the Union's got up here. Might be a lot for them to take on. We're going to want to get Stuart to get his cavalry up there as quickly as we can. You got nowhere to go, dude. Your back's against the Potomac. Johnson to move up. Just 
tighter and tighter. We'll move McBride down. Get ugly fast for the Confederate or for the Union in terms of numbers, but right now it's uh, 1788 to a thousand or so. Stewart's in position or just about. Now let's bring McBride down. Now he's smartly got some skirmishers covering the rear while he tries to face me on this side. We're at 429 in the afternoon. Alright, there's the numbers. And casualties are more significant than I'd like them to be at the moment. Um, let's look at the strength report. We're at 41,000 men. He's only got 14,000. He's down to just 20 guns. Alright, 
casualties. They're still not as one sided as I'd like them to be. But let's just kind of stay the course here. Oh, we got our 12th Louisiana heavy artillery with these 24 pounder howitzers. Well, I'd like to get them up closer to the line if I could. He's almost out of range. Five o'clock in the afternoon. We're getting low on time here. All right, Jeff Stewart, take your whole division and hit Wilson. He's the only brigade left over here. No, stop pursuing those guys. Hood's Brigade. That was the one that had already broken. They had broken over here. They're just making their way over. Come on, Pemberton. Where are you going? Stay there. We just got one brigade left here. And then we can turn everybody on these guys. I think he figured out he's done. He's starting to withdraw now. Look at the numbers. He's got the objective points by far, but it was the breaking and the casualties that did him in. All right, there we go. Let's see how this one turns out. Okay, so we've defeated Nathaniel Banks in the Fifth Corps. That's three straight Union Corps that have been defeated in detail uh, in Frederick, Maryland. That should get us a little closer to securing Washington, that whole area. Uh, he will come back at some point, but I don't know if his morale is going to withstand too much more of this. Let's take a look and see where things are currently standing, and then we'll wrap this episode up. Don't forget, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, um, we will be doing a live stream Union series coming up when this one's done. That should be a lot of fun. Um, and if you want to be a part of that through supporting the channel uh, and having your own unit in the game, you can do that through Patreon. Also, please always remember to hit that like button, leave a comment uh, on the, each of these videos as you watch them that supports the channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. All right. So now we've defeated the Union Fifth Corps. That pretty much eliminates the Union presence in Maryland and in around D.C. Uh, so... Not a lot happening elsewhere at the moment. That's pretty much where everything's been, at least for this episode and the one before it. Uh, we still do want to start advancing back into Kentucky out here in the West. Uh, and that'll hopefully be what the focus of the next episode is as we uh, begin to, to push back up into Union territory and hopefully drive his morale down even further. Uh, 
French intervention still at 70%. Union morale still at 42%, but I expect that's going to drop further after those defeats. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.